fuck, I say aloud. <laughs> Is there a lever on the other side of this doorway? Um, what you get from what happened is as long as the candle is lit, the door stays open. Oh, neat. I'm going to cross the threshold of the door, and when I do, if, if I, I think it works this way, can I just expel my flame whenever I want? Um. Like, oh, because oh, it's in a, it, it doesn't really work that way, I guess. All right, let me, okay, okay, this is... Let me explain the puzzle, because I'm just, like, thought in my head, like, that doesn't make sense. Um, so, you get what, like, the person did before, is, like, this ritual hat needs to have two candles, both candles going, and the blood to go. Um, this person grabbed one of the candles and, like, Indiana Jones through the door, so, um, right. as long as both of the candles are burning, um, and end those things, the door will stay open. Okay, so I guess I'll just do the same thing. Okay, you grab it, uh, you... <laughs> through the Indiana Jones almost hat pull, but with, like, the candles, the, like, oh. the door, like, the fireplace slides into place, um, and you are left with only the candle lighting this cavern, because you do not have dark vision as a human. Right. I don't. So, you are in this corridor that goes about 20 feet deeper into these caverns, holding this candle as your only light. Fuck. The storm... I say rages again. <laughs> outside. You hear thunder and you hear people screaming as you are in this very chaotic thing. And you've never felt closer to getting the answer that you've been looking for your entire life. You feel like you've just put your life at risk to get to the Linville Manor, to keep going in a island that is currently being sieged by monsters. You have pushed yourself to get here and you can just feel that you are getting so close to the thing you've wanted for so long. I'm ready for it. I, I'm gonna continue pushing forward. I've got this candle. If it uh, if it goes out, I will either produce flame or druid craft it back to its existence. Or okay, yeah, you yeah. slowly make your way through this corridor. Um, you go down 20 feet until you get to this cavern. Um, it looks like someone has carved out in stone these tunnels uh, you see like support beams made out of wood um you see like there is moss and other types of aquatic growth like that you find in coastal cities like against the wall it is very slippery and slimy down here um and as you begin pushing through these corridors you find this very elaborate almost catacombs like labyrinth like cave system um, you actually come to a pathway in which there are many different directions to go. What do you do? Is it like straight left right situation? Yeah, we'll say that. Keep we'll keep it simple. It's, it's totally like like that. Okay. Um, I will. Hmm. I'm still under pass without trace. Yep, how long does that last? Is that, that an hour? That lasts for... Up to an hour, okay. Up to an hour. Um, so I'll keep that going, and with the candle, I'll kind of, like, center myself in the... in the middle of all three paths. Okay. And I'll sort of just hold my pendant with my left hand and hold my candle out and really just, like, kind of focus and see if there's any wind or noise, like oh. wind moving the flame or noise coming from any directions, and I'll check all three directions. Brilliant, okay. Um, make an investigation check. Whew. Natural 20, 25, let's fucking go, dude. My god. <laughs> Such a in God. chaos is all possibilities. <laughs> um, all right, so as you stand here, you're looking down left, straight, right. You do this really clever thing where you hold out the candle, um, trying to kind of really figure out what's going on. You take some time, um, and you notice a couple things. First of all, to your left, um, you see the candle flame slowly flicker as it slowly like gets pulled that way. Uh, telling you that there is some type of 
either a very large um, area or a, an opening to the outside world coming from this left um, place. Um, to your right, um, I will say uh, you don't get anything, in the, but it's a very confident you don't get anything. Like You are very confident that there is nothing down there. You're actually pretty confident that it's a dead end. Um, and straight in front of you, you don't see the flame react anyway, and you don't hear anything, but you do, as you move the candle around, you do notice that the ground has been moved in a way that it seems like someone has recently gone down that that cavern. Hmm. Like I said earlier, seems like my decision's been made for me. I'll go <laughs> straight. <laughs> okay, um, you slowly... Uh, begin to move uh, straight. Are you keeping the candle lit? Um, I don't like the way you looked at the camera when you asked that. <laughs> no reason. Um, I don't have dark vision, so. <laughs> so yes. Yes, but okay. I'm gonna try to like, I guess, hold my hand in front of it. Okay, perfect. I can in such yeah, a way. Yeah. Um, give me a cell check. Right, I don't have chef's hands, so it's probably hurting a little. Uh, a 22 with a pass without trace. Okay. Oh, snap! I forgot I had Yeah, so you're moving pretty quickly, but uh, silently through these caverns. Um, and you begin to notice as you go this way that the cavern begins to shrink. Um, mm -hmm. you get to some po points where you have to, like, shimmy through um, both sides seeming really close uh, you have to climb over stuff it actually seems like part of this tunnel has been collapsed in before due to I don't know the rains the, the element uh, elements um, uh, but you're very confident that you're going the right way because you are seeing these footprints um, eventually though you begin to notice that this part of the cavern is going a little bit deeper and with that, you begin to notice that you go from walking on the slippery surface to walking in puddles of water. And you go from walking in puddles of water to walking in a foot of water. And you keep going until you get to a point where you realize that if you are going to keep moving through this cavern, you are going to have to swim. Because on, <laughs> the cavern is completely submerged and filled with debris. <laughs> Horror, bit. man! Further confirming for Cyril that it is far better to be an animal. <laughs> I mean, that's fair at this point. <laughs> um. So, bearing that in mind... Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. You're going to use a wild chip? I think I am, and... Is this your last one? It is. Okay. So it should probably make it a fucking banger. Yeah, I'd recommend that. How big is this, uh... Um... Area I have It's passed? going to be... claustrophobic. You, like, you're going to be... It's like going to be one of those tunnels where, like, you're going to be able to feel both sides as you're swimming. As a medium-sized man. Right. Right, exactly. Okay, so like a medium-sized animal would probably be okay. Yeah, probably slip through things. Okay. Hmm. Um. How how big is a dire wolf? I think that's large. I think you're right. So uh, that would be doing the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, it's a large beast. But yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure dire wolves are large. <laughs> but a normal wolf is a medium beast. Okay. And it's pretty good. It's pretty... I like wolves. They're feral. Oh. They're in line with what I think. They can breathe under... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. So I'm going to use my final wild shape to okay. turn into a wolf, and it'll be a very similar looking transformation, except this time I guess you'll see it more directly because I'll kind of like 
start to change and yeah. my head will go up and but my body will shrink down quickly so the only piece of my transformation you see is like a nose of a of a wolf forming in the collars of my jacket yeah, okay and my jacket will fall on the ground and sort of become the dark black fur of this uh wolf absolutely okay and then i will expend one mutation point and one level one spell slot okay to make it so i can breathe underwater so uh, the same sort of disfigurement will come about and as soon as i turn into a wolf it'll it'll seem like i'm in pain i'll kind of breathe and and these like gills essentially will start to protrude from my neck and fur and uh i will make my way through this death trap with pass without trace and yep dog stuff dog stuff okay so yeah you uh transform into a wolf and you begin to you dive into this cavern and like i said it's very claustrophobic here like you can feel both sides uh, there are pieces of wood in this and there's just a just a breeze it's like you are swimming in a cavern that has been collapsed in itself and probably has been filled with the water like rainwater and other runoff water so this water is disgusting um, I need from you an acrobatics check to see how well you're maneuvering, and it's going to be a DC 15. This is pretty rough terrain. Um, okay. I know the wolf has a plus two in dexterity. Yeah, I was going to say, thank goodness the wolf is more dexterous than I am. 11, okay. Let's go. So, you begin to move through this water, and at first, it's you're doing okay. You're doing as well as you can. You at least can breathe underwater, which is a big concern as you get here, um, as you make it through, and you feel as the your back, left paw, gets snagged on something. And normally, you'd be concerned about drowning here, but luckily, you're able to breathe underwater, but you are currently snagged in complete blackness in this water that is a slow current to it. As you can feel both sides uh, in these like sharp wooden pieces in this water, uh, what are you going to do? Um, Cyril is notoriously uh, cool under pressure. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of investigating terrible, terrible things, but I've also spent a lot of time with my druid circle and focusing on my emotions and not letting them get the best of me and um, more so just pointing them in the right direction so in this okay. case I'm, I'm just going to take some time even in wolf form to just kind of focus on my breathing and technique I know I can't see but I don't need to see I have four other senses I can rely on and I'm just going to try to wriggle myself free, calmly, coolly, and move forward. All right. Uh, I need an athletics check from you at DC 10. All right. And let's just say um, DC 10 and over you get past this part. Um, if not, you were going to get stuck here, and you're not going to want to be stuck here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, you slowly, you, this calmness, you said... Uh, Cyril has as you slowly begin to wiggle um, and I'll let you decide how calm you are after uh, you get a sense you get a vibration you feel the water move as you realize something else has just what? made its way into the waterway what did, but, 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 ahead of me or behind me um you, so this cavern isn't completely, like, goes from one part to another part. You do know there's parts that branch. Well, you can guess there's parts that branch off, and it sounds like it's coming from one of those side pathways. Okay. You are still stuck. What do you do? Oh, I'm gonna expend my last level one spell slot. Okay, to do what? Use a mutation and reduce okay. my size. <laughs> Hell yeah. The good old one-two combo. Um, Alright, you reduce your size. 
uh, and your paw is no longer caught in this debris, um, and you begin moving through this waterway. And like I said, you can feel you can feel the water movement as there is some type of creature bigger than you. Of um, course. <laughs> that is also struggling, making its way through, um, but it doesn't seem human. Mm. Sick. I move faster. Okay. Um, I need an acrobatics check. Uh, we're going to say this is a DC 12. See how f if you can get out of it. If you get a 12 or higher, you get out of this area. Fine. If not, you're going to encounter it. Come on, baby. Oh, my God. What's going on? Um, as you begin swimming forward, you keep begin going quickly. Uh, you start to kind of lose sense of where things are. And suddenly, you feel a burst of bubbles and movement in the water behind you as something grabs at you. And let's see if it grabs you. Get to roll some dice. That's the wrong monster manual. Um, it is going to try to make in tentacle want, attack at you. I just want you to remember that I'm a dog. Just remember Yeah, that. okay, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, why did you have to say that? <laughs> 17 plus 5. Oh my gosh! It hits you, I know it does. When I'm in dog form, my name's Sporky. So. <laughs> um, alright, uh, gonna roll d6, okay, that's only a 2, so you take 4 damage, um, and you are currently grappled by one of these aberrant creatures who has somehow found its way into the tunnels, um, you get a sense that it didn't come from the Linville Manor, but there, like I said, there's probably, like, these tunnelways connect to other things, and there was somehow one found its way down here, and it has currently grabbed you with one of the tentacles and is trying to pull you back to it. I think we have to, for the first time, it's time to roll initiative. Boom! Okay. Ooh, that's good for you. You don't have to do this. I, I know, but the dice, the dice gods demand blood. Um, all right, you got a 15. This creature got a six. You go first. Uh, round one. Fight. I bite you. All right. Um, a nine does not hit. Uh -oh. oh, actually, a nine does hit. I forgot I modified these. Uh, a nine does oh. hit, so uh, roll that damage for me, please. Yes. I'm gonna knock you prone! <laughs> seven! Okay, this is gonna be an interesting mechanic. So you do seven damage uh, to this creature. Uh, let me do math real quick. Um, as you turn around and you bite into this tentacle, it releases like this inky blood, and you hear. You don't. While well, you're underwater, so all you hear is like. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, it's like a very muted scene. Uh, but you do feel like with this bite, the tentacle, we will say. Um, that's enough damage. I, I can say that like this tentacle retracts, and you can feel. Uh, this humanoid uh, creature, like, rear rear back in pain, um, and is going to make a strength saving throw to see if it is knocked prone in water, which is a very interesting concept. Um, it got a 15, so it is not knocked prone. Um, you still have your movement. Uh, do you, are you trying to get away from this thing after the bite? Um, yeah. So... Do you want me to roll for the HP, or do you just want to go off what the standard is, like the average? Uh, just go after, after uh, just use the average for a wolf. Okay, so I have uh, seven, seven left. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use all 40 movement speed to try to get away. 40, okay. Um, that is good to know. Um, all right, so yeah, you bite this creature, the tentacle, um, goes back to the, the to this creature it rears back in pain and you start taking off through this dark water moving between the debris um is that your turn i swim 30 feet and end my turn okay yeah so you go the <laughs> the, the 30 feet uh you end your turn uh, totally not looking at rules right there um and uh, we will say this creature will follow after you uh, uh and come after you and it is going to make another tentacle attack because it is you are still in range uh, when it uses all its movement uh so uh, just to picture this uh, this wolf uh, you are moving through uh dodging out of all this debris and stuff and you kind of uh because it is dark and you don't have dark vision you just see this shadowy 
figure coming behind you, dodging through, squeezing through pieces, um, and it is going to make another tentacle attack. <laughs> did I distract you into not opportunity attacking me? You did. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'll let you have this little celebration for a second, uh, because... I am a dog. Uh, oh, oh, my oh, camera's shit. blurry. Alright. Well, that's a nat AC, 20. My AC's 13, so take that. <laughs> that that's is a nat... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that is a nat 20, everyone. Um, woo! This is about to get spicy, so uh, this is going to do 2d6 plus 2 damage. Uh, right, so oh, okay. So, water. what? Cyril can't breathe underwater. Well, I mean, you're... Okay, so I rolled a nat 20, but then I rolled two ones on the dice. Uh, <laughs> Okay. So you take four damage altogether, and uh, uh -huh. you are grappled again. I have three health. Thank goodness. Nice. Um, you are grappled again. We will say like, you are making your way through, and again, just like this thing wraps out and begins pulling you back, and you like use your cl claws to try to like pull yourself forward, but you are actively getting pulled backwards. It is your turn in the initiative again, round two. What a scumbag. <laughs> um. Well. Hmm. I'm gonna bite him again. Okay. Ballsy, I know. Woo! Let's fucking go! Nat oh, okay, roll that damage for me. Let's fucking go! Alright, 12 damage. Um, oh god, that's... Okay. Max damage. Hell yeah. So, um, this is how this is going to look, and then I'm gonna have you narrate your part. Uh, this creature reaches out its tentacle, grabs you, and begins pulling you back. You're using all your force to try to keep yourself from getting pulled to this creature, because you don't, like, you don't know what will happen if you get pulled into this creature, what's gonna happen. Um, you quickly turn around, and how do you kill this creature? <laughs> um, what? So, I turn around, and I'm still a dog. So, I don't care about the tentacles, only yeah. what it's attached to. Okay. So, it just like a power lunge with my huge wolf nose into whatever this the base of this tentacle is attached to, and just biting and tearing and biting and tearing anything and everything that is... Yeah, and like, you that. rip this to shreds. Um, you rip this humanoid to absolute pieces. Uh, the water and like chunks, like ma like the blood in the water, I begin mixing in the chunks. Uh, but you can't see anything. And this creature, you feel go limp and float up to the top of this cavern. There's a top to float to. Well, I mean, it's like the top is like two feet up, so it's oh, like okay. the water. It's like there's like probably like a very small bit of air that is like maybe not <laughs> okay. even that. Like. You know, bodies float. Um, so it's like currently above this, uh, like probably like three foot, five feet tunnel thing. Um, Good. But yeah, that is, uh, you kill that and I will say you are with that, uh, the dangers of this corridor are realized and you are able to make your way through it, uh, taking a little bit longer. Um, and you eventually get out of this watery tunnel as you pull yourself up as a wolf um, and you notice that you are now in a area that looks how do I want to describe this you go out of the water and you notice that you are back into dry land you've gone up a couple feet now um, and you are in a tunnel that is skinny but it opens up to a very large room that you can see um, currently has some candle light in it currently flickering, illuminating things. Um, but that's not the most interesting thing going on in this tunnel, because as you look around as a wolf, you notice that on the walls and the ceiling of this cavern, as it pushes into this very large room, are paintings of people, varying in ages, these paintings. And each one of these paintings has the symbol of the everlasting hunger painted on top of their faces. Um, and I'm going to need you to make an investigation check for me. As a wolf? As a wolf. I'm pretty sure you still use your own wisdom stats. Yeah, I think so. Or in intelligence. I can't remember which one is in this again. I, I haven't been using the wolf stats for 
Oh my gosh, should I fucking refresh my roll 20 again? Tell the people what you got. <laughs> Another nat 1. Yes, refresh. That's, so you. So just so you know, this arc, you've got two nat 1s in a row, and then two nat 20s in a row. You're even. <laughs> um, and chaos is all possibilities. Um, okay. <laughs> the thing is, you've got two nat 20s on, like, exposition rolls. <laughs> Which have been great. You're getting all the information. You're an investigator. It makes sense. Oh, uh, but yeah, refresh. Um, so as you begin looking around uh, this cavern with all these different paintings on it, um, you begin to slowly notice missing people that you have probably been, like, missing people reports that you've probably been a part of. These paintings are paintings of people throughout probably the last 50 years who have gone missing and that is the one thing all these people have in common is that they have gone missing and as you slowly make your way through this cavern eventually run into the familiar face of your sister plastered on this wall other paintings overlapping it the symbol, and with this investigation check, you realize that each one of these people, these missing people, someone has performed some type of magic using these images and this symbol to draw them to the sea, to the deeps. Whatever this cult is, whatever is down here, is compelling people through magic to sacrifice themselves to the sea, and this has been going on for a very long time. As you are realizing all of this, you begin to hear muttering coming from the main chamber. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess because you decided you'll speak a pistol, you do understand what they're saying. Um, angry. Angry. Getting angry. <laughs> angry. You hear um, a person not really speaking coherent, speaking coherently, speaking full sentences, almost as something is speaking through them, and they're saying a ritual, a prayer, if you will, to this dem demonic being, this everlasting hunger, and what you pick up from this mumbling is... Like I said, like something's talking through it. You hear the person's voice calling to the everlasting hunger, calling out for salvation, calling out to join them. But then you also hear a conflicting voice, which is much deeper and much, much, much harsher that is angry. Angry that someone took something from them. And as you are hearing this, you begin to hear bones crack. And you begin to hear this person's pleas become screams and pains of agony. As there is something happening in that chamber that you are unsure of, because you can currently not see. Great. So... It's real dark. Yep. I'm all black. Got yellow yep. eyes. Yep. I have this like amazing scene painted in my head, right? Yeah. Looking at the area that I'm at from this candlelit room, you just hear yeah. like a wolf fucking shake its enormous pelt off from all this water. Hell yeah. And uh, like expose itself to this candlelight as it like walks towards the quote unquote camera. And it's just yellow eyes in the darkness. And I want to yeah. see exactly what's going on, but I do not want to expose myself. Okay, make a self check. You still have pass without trace. And? 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 I'm a wolf. And you're a wolf. Which helps me because Cyril is not stealthy, but this wolf has a plus four to stealth and pass without trace. Twenty-seven. That is absolutely gonna beat this thing's passive perception. Um, so you, like you said, you have this very cinematic moment. You slowly make your way, um, kind of moving through the darkness. Your eyes illuminating off the candlelight, um, moving just stealthy enough. 
to not really alert what's going on or whatever creature is in there to your presence. And as you look into this main chamber, you see this dome-like room um, with a desk on it. A desk has some candles burning on it. You see there's like wax dripping off of it. You can tell that uh, that is uh, where the light is coming from. You see a person wearing robes who's kind of like doing the whole exorcist thing right now. Like their back is completely backwards. Like they're like completely flipped over in a very unnatural way. Their bones are cracking as they're becoming convoluted. Like, and you can tell like this thing is, this person is moving in ways that a human should not move because it's like moving its shoulder and like behind it where like you shouldn't be able to do and you hear a bone crack. It's like something has taken over this humanoid and is slowly and it doesn't understand like what it is to be a human so it is completely destroying its body um you notice in this room like i said all the all you notice in this room uh more paintings uh all the way on the ceiling all around uh this desk this desk has like a stack of these very large books on them like uh, note keeping books some um, like someone has been keeping a tally of all these victims along with that you see some um, you, along with that, you see an altar in front of this person who is still breaking all their bones, moving backwards in ways they shouldn't be, uh, which is the same symbol, the triangle with the tentacles going out, and the circles, and it's this, like, large bronze statue um, that someone has constructed, and um, as you are watching this all, you finally see this guy's body go limp, fall to the ground, Laying there in a way that anyone with bones should not lay because it's unnatural. And then you see, very similar to the tentacles ripping out of the other people, you watch instead this person almost, and this is going to be very gross, <laughs> this looks like this person, God, the best way I can describe this is a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. As you watch as this person's body, body completely rips open as this flesh monster emerges from it. It looks like it has no bones, but it has multiple teeth, like multiple sets of mouth, uh, mouths and multiple sets of eyes. And it's just like this large mass of muscle and fat and just goo that has emerged from this person cocoon. And you can hear it screaming out in agony of all these different voices and it keeps muttering you've taken what is mine you will pay what do you do i'm a dog <laughs> yeah you are what the fuck am i supposed to do who um took i what was his what who took what was his you're not sure but you do <laughs> know that on the other side of this monstrosity that is this flesh thing um, with a bunch of teeth and eyes um, are a bunch of ledgers and a bunch of notes that very much could have the answer to who is doing this and why they are doing this. Mm. What you gonna mm -hmm. do? <laughs> what does this guy seem like he's doing? Does it look like he's gonna leave? Is he gonna stay? Is there anyone He is else growing here? with size. He's growing? Slowly just like... Drawing with size. Does he? Uh, does he uh, uh, oh god. Okay. So, I'd like to make a move for the ledgers, but if this guy's gonna fight me, I have to like be ready to fight him. It's up to you. Yeah, I will say like it is very distracted right now. Um, but it's going to be a really high stealth roll to get to the ledgers, and then it's going to be even harder to get past this, but it is absolutely possible. I want to try... I am a wolf with three health. Yes. I am going to try my damnedest to sneak over to these ledgers and soak in as much information as I can. If I have to flip through the pages with my wet nose. Oh no. Okay, so make a cell check for me. And I'm about. I apologize for what's about to happen. Oh no? What a passive perception really good? Can't sneak past him? No. This monster just has something else going for. 30. You are incredibly stealthy. You are making your way 
past this creature, this room. This room, like I said, it's big, but it's also cavern, so not that big. And you get to the ledger. Completely bypassing all of its eyes, and it's, this thing is growing in size. Um, as you see this body slowly getting dissolved into it, like the cocoon it is absorbing in itself. Um, and you... If this was any other creature, you would have got, you would be out of here. But as you get closer to it, you begin to hear incoherent babbling coming from all the mouths, speaking some deep ancient version of abyssal. You know, speak abyssal, but this is something much older and much darker that you're only putting together pieces, and it seems like this thing is crying out. But, as you get close to the ledger, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. As a wolf. No, no yeah, you use your own wisdom. Oh, no, as a wolf. <laughs> no, this is me. This is Cyril. Um, as you get close, I guess the next question is how are you going to grab these ledgers of a wolf? Well, the plan was never to grab them. I was just going to sit there and read them. Fair. Fair. <laughs> um, you get close to this thing, and you begin hearing all these voices. And you are, like, slowly slinking up to these ledgers. And you these babbling. You're really good at blocking it out. Until you start to hear the voices of your sister and the babbling. And the voices of your mother as they're calling out in pain to get back the thing that has taken from them. They have become part of this entity. At least their voices have. They've become part of this everlasting hunger. But, you are a skilled investigator. You are good at what you do. And despite this horrific thing happening, despite not hearing your sister's voice in, who know, in many, many years, you close your eyes and push your way through the mental torment as you pass that wisdom saving throw and you get to the ledgers. My heart. <laughs> oh god. Um, I'm just gonna try to sneakily as fuck uh, like open these books, sort of push them off one another if I have to, like level them out, open them with my nose. Um, I mean... I've got three extra health right now. I have to use it, maybe. So I don't want to not be a dog. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do it as much as I can. You know how, like, uh, old ladies will, like, lick their thumb and turn the page of a book? Yeah. It's kind of how I want to, like, use my face, right? So, like, try to take in a bunch of information and then just, like, drag my wolf face across it with my tongue kind of out. <laughs> and turn the page with my damp tongue. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm reading this. Um, okay. Um, Alright, so this is going to be interesting. How I'm going to rule this is because this is an area effect. This is going to be happening every six seconds. So, these are going to be investigation checks, and then wisdom saves to see how much information you can gain from these ledgers. This is a constant battle against my own self. Pretty much. It is this very cinematic, you oh. trying to battle against the voices of your past loved <sighs> ones. So let's start off with an investigation check, DC 10. These are going to get harder, by the way, too. My heart. 10. 10. <laughs> Ten. Cool. So you begin pushing through the ledgers, and as you expected, these are the names of... The people you see on the walls, these paintings, these are people who have been sacrificed. Um, and the first bit of information you gain is that it seems like over the years they ramped up how many people went missing. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, baby. These voices are in your head, but you're still pushed through. You can hear them crying out. You remember that birthday, them on the docks, but you just, you're able to keep going. Investigation check, DC 15. Oh, my goodness. Do I feel like I'm cracking the case right now? You are. This is like the, this is, okay. this is, uh, <laughs> Tom is a flat circle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 16. 
Um, you begin looking through, you push forward, and you begin to notice names that aren't of those who sacrificed, and you notice names in which have made a deal with something or someone, um, and the name is, oh god, I forgot to, I need to open another document. <laughs> Here it is. Um, you see the name of... Myra Blackwell, as someone who has signed a contract with this cult. Myra Blackwell being the Baroness of Gravenroy, the person who runs it all, who nothing happens in Gravenroy without her or her family's doing, and they have been the one who have made this deal with a cult. You're starting to put pieces together, but you're not sure how this started or why exactly this is going on. Wisdom saving throw. Mm. Mm, These are, just so everyone knows, he go. has a plus four in wisdom <laughs> uh, saves and he has rolled two 22s. Um, so two 18s. Um, all right, the voices are getting louder as this thing expands. You hear voices crying out in pain. They're keep muttering. Uh, that you've taken what they you've you've taken something from me. There's anger, there's sadness, there's pain in these voices, and you push through investigation check DC twenty to put everything together. You have one more memory. Are you using it? <laughs> oh, I should have before I clicked the button. It's okay. You're gonna have to do another wisdom saving throw. You just keep going through more and more names of people taken. Is this is this wisdom saving throw my last roll probably? Um, it depends. You can try oh. to do another investigation check. It's it depends on how long you want to stay here. Oh man. Ah. Uh, uh, all right. I'll do wisdom saving throw so I can investigate again with a memory. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. Oh shit. Fuck. As you don't find anything, and this realization that. The person who is supposed to be protecting the city has been the one who signed so many of the people away. And I mean, it's to be fair, everyone doesn't like the Blackwell family. They're a very bad family. <laughs> um, they're a ba they're the Baroness. They're part of the council. It's not great. Um, you go in to these voices, and I need you to roll initiative. No. <laughs> As a wolf. Where's the half? Oh. What's your dex? As a wolf? Yeah. It is fifteen. You so it's a plus uh Two, right? Yes. Um, okay, well you both rolled fours, but you get to go first because they have a minus one and you have a plus two. <laughs> oh, so, I need you to roll a d8 for me, please. This doesn't feel like I'm going first. <laughs> well... <laughs> okay. This might actually be good for you. Okay. I like that. Seems good. You are stunned for this entire round. Not able to do anything by these voices. But good for you is your... You haven't attracted this creature yet. This babbling is purely coming from it, and it's a thing going on around it, but it doesn't know you're here. So, on its turn, it's just gonna keep doing what it's doing and expanding. It is your turn again. Am dog. Investi you can make another investigation check and a wisdom save. But, uh, well, I, I'll still be paralyzed. Nope, right? it's only until your next turn. Oh. Okay. Hmm. 
Are you going to investigate I, more or are you going to dip? I think I want to use my... I think I want to use my last memory and investigate more. Okay, go for it. What, uh, what memory are you pulling from? All of my memories of Gravenroy, this family, their, like, comeuppance into power, their, their, like, their influence, anything and everything that they've ever done, how it could have affected parts of my life. Um, just, like, this huge revelation that I'm having, just putting all the pieces together and then, like, the Pepe Sylvia wall in my mind connecting yeah, it all to absolutely. this, like, one family. Absolutely. It's not, like, one specific memory, necessarily. It's just, like, this huge amalgamation of all this different information that's coming to my yeah. head. Hell yeah. And um, I'm gonna investigate. Investigation. Dead advantage. Oh my god. I hate myself. <laughs> that was a 5 with advantage. So a 10. I need a wisdom saving throw. No! Should have taken advantage on that one. On your turn, I need you to roll D8. Oh my Things god. Things might get bad here. The memory didn't affect my whole turn. Nope. <laughs> and you are out of memory, so you cannot reduce damage. I am a dog. We'll see for how much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a D8. Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't see that four there. Oh, you got a four, okay. Oh my god, you are... Numbers. Uh, the creature still doesn't know you're there. Thank goodness. It's your turn. And nothing happens to me? Uh, you are stunned for another six seconds, not able to do anything. These whispers getting into your head and messing with you um, as you're starting to, like, hallucinate that your sister is in this room with you. Um, your turn. Are you good leaving, or are you going to make more go for I have to investigate again. I have to. Okay, it's still DC That's why I'm here. It's you a have a DC plus five. 20? So you have to hit a 15 or higher. Oh my god, you're getting so close. You're like pushing it and you're getting closer. And I'll say with an 18, I'm actually going to drop the DC down to 18 because you're getting closer. Um, not for this round. You didn't get it this round, I should say. Um, but uh, you start getting closer and you're like putting things together. You're seeing these names. You're seeing people who made a deal with it. You're seeing the everlasting hunger going on. You see this cult that has like sprung up recently and you don't know what's, what's going on. You're like, you get it like... Obviously, there's a high-powered person obviously making a deal with a cult, but what are they getting out of it? And what is the everlasting hunger getting out of it? Well, obviously, it's getting sacrificed, so maybe you do know that. Uh, but you don't know what is Myra Blackwell getting out of this. Why was your sister sacrificed? Wisdom saving throw. Oh. You pass it. You are pushing through these whispers. The hallucinations are disappearing. You're getting so close. Investigation check. DC 18. You, are, you get a 16. You... You're getting so close. Wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Just so everyone knows that if you, he fails a wisdom saving throw and rolls over a four, he's going to enter into combat with a very powerful thing. <laughs> Just so everyone knows the stakes here. You pass your wisdom saving throw. Investigation check. DC 18. <laughs> 24. Goodness. And finally, after seconds, after this thing grows uh... and the whispering has completely taken over the entire room, echoing off with all this babble, you push through and it finally clicks. You're looking at all these ledgers. And the reason why Graven Roy has been a somewhat successful, and I'm going to use successful with quotes around it, in this world, this world of despair, this world in which the wilds have turned against them and the celestial realms are cut off, is because of their ability to take warp weed. Warp weed being this strange moss that they're able to take from the deep, the sea that is imbued with the blood of a god and they're able to take that and power their machines with that uh, blood because that blood is power. It is because this deal with the everlasting hunger, this everlasting hunger lives in the deep and it allows the Blackwell family and the Gravenroy city to take this warp weed. And in exchange, the Blackwell family has to supply this demon, this creature, this everlasting hunger 
with food. That food is the souls and spirits of the people of Gravenroy. And the last thing you realize as you're standing here, and that actually sounds like you're about to die, you're not. Um, <laughs> the thing you realize here looking on the ledger is the everlasting hunger is angry because the deal says that they, the people of Gravenroy and the Blackwell family can take warp weed from the deep, but it seems that they have taken something much bigger and more powerful, something that the everlasting hunger wants, needs. And those creatures running through the lower city right now are in retaliation for whatever they took. And you get all of this. You put together all the pieces. Your inquisitive mind. And you look up at this creature who is still growing. What do you do? Well, I can't fucking kill it. So how do I get out of here? <laughs> uh, you can try to sneak past it and go the way you came from. Is there another way out, or is that the, is the way? That's I came the in? only way into this chamber. You do know that there are the other tunnels through, th through uh, this these caverns. What's the ceiling look like in here? Uh, it's made out of stone, and like you see, wood beams currently holding it up. And you know that like if you break those wood beams, it's gonna come probably collapse. Okay. So. As stealthily as I can. Um. Which you still have passed without trace, right? Yes. Okay, cool. How 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 sturdy do these logs look? Um, I will say that um, you look at them, and I mean they're like sturdy enough that like if you like hit them or anything, they'll stay. But like if you took a like large force into them, or maybe. Um, burned them or something that they would probably collapse. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, as sneakily as I can, move to where I came in. Okay. And. Uh, shit. I, uh, I really want to try to kill this thing with the ceiling, but again, I would have to be not wild-shaped. <laughs> yeah, you would be really risking it. All of it. The yep. whole thing. Right, you now know, you, like, the pieces are together. You have solved this. You know the reason why your sister and your mom are dead. But do you risk it to kill this thing? This spawn of a demon. How far away from it is this, like, entryway that I'm in, and then how far away would I be from the ceiling? Um, I I'll say it's, like, 30 feet. You're 30 feet away from it right now, just outside of the whispers. My thought is that I'll just, like, produce flame at these wood beams. But I don't really want to stick around for this thing to know that I'm here. But I would still have Pass Without Trace, I guess. So, I want to try to, as the dog, go and hide as best I can, and then on okay. wild shape, still stay as hidden as possible, and just, like, sneaky, sneaky produce flame as as many times as I can without, like, being exposed or having to roll initiative. <laughs> okay, and I will, I'm gonna add something onto this. Um, <laughs> you know that you have to go through those submerged tunnels to leave. But this, what I'm collapsing wouldn't affect those, right? No, but Cyril can't breathe underwater. Right. Yeah. I know that. Um. Which I'm not dissuading you from doing this. I'm just saying that you know that if you do Wild Shape out, you do make those tunnels a little bit riskier because you do not have the ability to breathe underwater. But I have keen mind and can accurately recall my path. That is okay. That's I think that's your that's the piece of the puzzle you've just yeah. Is that my out? Okay, so I yeah. think I'm gonna stick to it and just like pew 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 as many produced flames as I can before I. I'll make a stealth check and I will tell you how many you can. 
Shit, I have passed without trace. That's 20, which is good because that beats his passive perception. I'll say you're able to light three of the main beams up, and we'll do a cinematic as you use your keen mind. You throw three, produce flames. One, two, three. The entire cavern lights up. You see the... We'll do this like really like cinematic shot as you watch as the fire spreads from the wood beams onto the paintings as the paintings of all these victims slowly burns away and you watch as this thing screams out and it moves incredibly slow as it tries to move it like will see you and begin to move at you and as it goes you watch as the fire rises up and the heat bends the beams and the beams collapse and you watch as the entire cavern collapses onto this creature killing it and wiping away all the portraits of the people who have been given to this cult. Do you just make a mad dash out of there? Absolutely. So fast. Like, I I see that, like, as I'm turning my head, running <laughs> to dive into the water. Yeah, you run, you dive, you see well, the last things we see of you, you're swimming through these uh, caverns, you have your keen mind, you know exactly where to go, you know what to miss, you know not to get your foot snagged in certain spots, you make your way through. And the last question I have for you that you need to make before we wrap this uh, this one shot up. Do you, you escape back through the manor, or do you go out this other pathway that leads to the outside that you're unsure of where it goes? Hmm. There was wind. There was wind. So, like, outside the city, maybe? Well, you know you're on an island. It's not going to lead that oh. far. You're probably still oh, on that yeah. small island. Uh, because Gravenroy is made, like, the lower city is made up right. of a bunch of different islands because it used to not be islands, but it flooded when the, during the war. Well, I'm not fucking going into that manor. No way. Okay, so you dash through uh, the corridors heading towards the open air, and eventually you get to the end of this coastal cavern that you pop out on the beaches of the lower city. And we will say the last thing we see as we end this arc, this chapter as the person, the god in the beginning said, you pop out, you're on the beach of the lower city, it's probably around 10 now. It is completely dark, it, there's no stars above, but there are, is the moon that is shattered into three, which that sounds like it's alarming, but that's like just what it is here. So you're like, okay. Um, but you look out from the lower city up, and you see the other lower city islands currently have smoke rising from them. You hear screams and yelling. It is still storming, causing this black smoke. Rain is coming down, which I guess you wouldn't see the moon, so knock that part out. Um, you look up at the upper city and you see Citadel Island, the island in which the Baroness Myra Blackwell and her family lives. And you see that coming from the deep is destruction and chaos from these creatures slowly making their way to the Citadel Island, the same place in which the person who is responsible for the death of your sister lives. And I have one last question for Cyril. Now knowing the reason your sister is dead, and knowing that this city is soon going to be under complete siege from a demon, do you stay and go after the person and try to the person who has caused all your pain and try to get justice, or do you leave Gravenroy? Uh, no words. No words. Uh, straight up Indiana Jones style, just picks up his fedora, which somehow has survived this entire night, shakes some bullshit off of it, some stuff from the water and whatnot, puts it on, pulls out a wet cigarette, lights it with Produce Flame, and the last thing you'll see of Cyril is just him walking towards his... his revenge. 